our dear pupils of P6, Kampala Junior Schools. My name is Teacher Juliet Karungi and I'm here to take you through science today. And uh, the topic that I'm going to take you through is the circulatory system. P6, I'm talking to the P6 pupils of Kampala Junior Schools. And I've already told you my name, Teacher Juliet Karungi again, and then the topic is the circulatory system. I told you we are going to look at science. Our topic we are going to look at today in our P6 syllabus is the circulatory system. The circulatory system. We go into the details, we need to know what the circulatory system is. Um, uh, the circulatory system is a group of organs or components in the body that help to transport oxygen, food, and other materials. I'm going to repeat, children. The circulatory system is a group of organs, or it is a group of components that help to transport food, oxygen, and other materials in the body. So, a circulatory system is a group of body organs or components that help to transport food, oxygen, and other materials to all body organs, as well as carry waste, as well as carry waste products, as well as carry waste products to the excretory, to the excretory system. excretory system. Yeah, when you go to P7, you learn more about the excretory system and the organs that help to, to remove these waste products from the body, but again it was transported by the circulatory system. Um, that is briefly what the excretory system is, but we are going to look uh, at the details of it. I've already told you that it's a group of body organs or components. So next, on number number two, children, we are going to look at those components or the body organs that make up the circulatory system. Let me hope you're following me because I've said it is a system of, it's a system or made of organs or components. So on number number two, we are going to look at components, components or body organs body organs that make up, up the circulatory system. 
that make up the circulatory, the circulatory system. Children, it's very easy to write the word circulatory. Circulatory, when we are writing it, we look at the small words. If it's a big word, look out for the small words, like the word circular, which is not so complete. But then we have a small word, the two, and then R, Y. Then I've told you in P7, you learn about this, don't worry. This is also a group of organs that help to remove the waste products from the body. The components or body organs that make up the circulatory system, children, are, we are going to look at those components. I say use the word component because some are components, while others are organs. So the components, among the components, we have one, uh, we have the blood. Blood is a component. Blood is not a blood is not a body organ. Then among the body organs that make up the circulatory system, children, we have uh, the heart. We have the heart. We have the heart and Another body organ that forms the circulatory system uh, is the blood, are the blood vessels. The blood vessels. Following and you're listening uh, and you're taking in what we are learning, components or body organs that make up the circulatory system are only three. And among them, uh, only one is a component, while the other two are organs. And actually, you're going to be asked in exams several times that give one organ that makes up the circulatory system. And if they ask you that question, they want one or they want two, the organs are the heart, the blood vessels. These are organs. And another question is going to ask you to give one component of the circulatory system. The component is blood, the heart, actually the component takes both, the three. But of course when they ask you to name the organs, you don't include blood, because blood is not a body organ. Uh, next, after looking at the components and the body organs, we are going to look at one by one at a go. We are going to look at one by one at a go. That is the heart, uh, the blood, the heart, and the blood vessels. And of course, we cannot learn about all of them in this lesson. We are going to start with uh, the blood vessels as our next sub-topic, the blood vessels. The blood vessels. That is now our next sub-topic. From our big topic, the circulatory system, we are looking at its component, which is blood vessels. And I've told you children, we shall look at all these components in details one by one. And we have started with blood vessels. Now, you're asking yourselves, what are blood vessels? We're going to know blood vessels are tubes in the body. Blood vessels are tubes in the body. Blood vessels are tubes in the body. Blood vessels, blood vessels, blood vessels are tubes, are tubes in the body. Blood vessels are tubes in the body. Pupils, we are saying that blood vessels are tubes in the body through which blood passes. Tubes in the body through which through which blood through which blood passes blood vessels are tubes in the body through which blood passes when going to and from different body parts let us I'm repeating blood vessels are tubes in the body through which blood passes when going, blood vessel through which blood passes when going to and fro, to and fro, different parts.
relaxing of the body to and from different different parts different parts of the body yeah that is it those are blood vessels blood vessels are tubes in the body through which blood passes when going to and from different parts of the body uh, because you need to know that blood goes to different parts of the body and also blood comes from different parts of the body but as it goes into the different parts of the body it doesn't move through space into our body we have those tubes and those tubes are called blood vessels hope you've got that children and maybe after that we have three types of blood vessels in our body we have three types of blood vessels in our body and we are going to look at all three types of blood vessels let's write it as our number two that there are three types there there are three types there are three types of blood vessels. There are three types of there are three types of blood vessels. There are three types of blood vessels. There are three types of blood vessels in our body. Namely, uh, there are three types of blood vessels. Namely, I want to keep reminding you that I've told you already that those are tubes that allow blood to pass through our body, that transport, that carry blood to and from different parts of our body. And the three blood vessels are, I want to refer to one, we have the veins. The veins. Then the second one, the arteries, the arteries, and then the capillaries, capillaries, capillaries. Children, those are the three main blood vessels that we have in our body. We say there are three types of blood vessels in our body, and namely the veins, the arteries and the capillaries. Hope we are together. And uh, we are going to look at each blood vessel after a go, one by one, in the details. We need to know what does this blood vessel do in our body? What is the function of this blood vessel in our body? So we are going to look at each blood vessel at a go. And we shall start with um, the first one, the arteries. The arteries, these words are very simple to write. If you can't write a word the way it is, you look out for the small words, for the small words. In class, I believe uh, uh, we've been teaching you this, that if the word is too big for you to write, look out for a small word, like you have a small word at. Then if the others don't make up a small word like you learned in your lower classes, you leave and then you read them as letters. The arteries. Now what are these arteries? We know they are blood vessels. What do they do their body? What are their functions? How do they look like? And everything. Now we are going to go into the details of the arteries now. We want to find out what are arteries? How do they look like? What do they do? What do these blood vessels do? Why, why do we have them in our body? So we are going to start with number one. And we are going to say that arteries um, actually, I will give you in terms of their characteristics. In terms of their characteristics, we are going to say these are thick walled blood vessels. Arteries, these, these are thick walled, thick walled blood vessels. Arteries, these are thick walled blood vessels. These are thick walled blood vessels, which
which carry blood away from the heart. These are thick walled blood vessels which carry, which carry blood away from the heart. Arteries, these are thick walled blood vessels, blood vessels which carry blood away from the heart. We have already looked at the heart as one of the core organ that makes up the circulatory system. Don't worry, in the time to come, in the other lessons, we are going to learn about the heart. We shall look at the details. And maybe in that details of the heart, we are going to know that blood is carried from the heart because that is its function. Maybe before we reach there, I can give you a hint of the heart. This main function is to pump blood to all body parts. But I've already told you that blood moves through blood vessels to and from different body parts. Now here comes the arteries. These are thick walled blood vessels which carry blood away from the heart. Let me hope you've got that children about arteries. If someone asks you, do you know about blood vessels? Do you know about arteries? Yes, you say I know about arteries. These are thick walled. We are going to find out the reason why they are thick walled and the others will be thin, you know, the opposite and like that. So number two, we shall look at the characteristics of arteries. What are they in common? Characteristics. Characteristics. Character. Characteristics. Characteristics of arteries. Characteristics of arteries. Characteristics of arteries. Characteristics of arteries. I'm trying to underline this so that I can emphasize this. You need to know um, what are these arteries, how do they look like. Now the characteristics actually describing the characteristics of arteries. Um, we have number one. Uh, number one, uh, they have actually number one is got from the, their definition here that these are thick walled blood vessels. And if someone asks you, give one characteristic of um, arteries, you get from the definition that arteries have thick walls. That is their first characteristic. Very strong very uh, heavy, very strong walls. And actually, we cannot use heavy, but I want strong, we do use it. But when we say thick walls, that's enough to show you that those are very, very strong walls. So they have thick and strong walls. And the first characteristic, they have thick. Thing that um, arteries have thick and strong Walls. And actually there is a reason why they have thick and strong walls. So I'm not going to stop at that. I'll also tell you that they have thick and strong walls. The reason for these strong walls is for these arteries to withstand the pressure at which blood is pumped through them. Actually, when we look at these blood vessels, we already told you that these are tubes carrying blood. But as blood is passing through these tubes, it passes through in different ways. When it comes to the arteries, blood is pumped through them with a very high pressure. And that's the reason why they were made with thick walls or thicker walls so that they can withstand the pressure at which blood is pumped through them. So we are going to say they have thick and strong walls to withstand the high pressure. To withstand, they have thick and strong walls to withstand, to withstand the the high pressure. The high pressure. Where is this high pressure coming from? It is the pressure at which blood is pumped through the arteries. And maybe in a simple terms, uh, you're going to be asked several times in exams that why are um, arteries made up of thick walls? What will be your answer? They are made up of thick walls to withstand the high pressure at which 
which blood is pumped through them to withstand the high pressure at which maybe let me continue with at which so that you can understand it very well as you read your notes they have thick walls and I mean thick and strong walls to withstand the pressure at which blood at which blood is pumped is pumped through them through them so children here have, have answered a question that is very very common in exams so on several occasions in your p6 in your p7 come the next year you'll be asked several times that why are arteries made up of thick walls and your answer would be that they are made up of thick walls in order to withstand or to stand or to accommodate the pressure at which blood is pumped through them. Maybe I need to tell you again that blood through the, uh, the arteries goes at a higher pressure. And maybe another reason is that arteries carry oxygenated blood which is always pumped at a high pressure. You can always write that. If you don't remember the, to withstand the high pressure of blood, you can always say it is made up of thick walls because it carries oxygenated blood. Then we are going to look at another characteristic. Arteries, most arteries carry oxygenated blood. Actually, I've already talked about it. It is going to be our second characteristic. That most arteries, most arteries, most arteries carry most arteries carry oxygenated oxygenated most arteries carry oxygenated blood i've used the word most and because we understand our english very well most does not mean all most arteries carry oxygenated blood except except yeah. There is an artery, there is a special artery, there is a special blood vessel. Actually, we are, uh, as we continue looking, we are going to look at the special blood vessels. That is under the heart. And that special blood vessel, one of them is called the pulmonary artery. Except the pulmonary. Pulmonary. Children, the word is pulmonary artery. Except the pulmonary artery. That is characteristic number two. That most arteries carry oxygenated blood, except most arteries carry most arteries carry oxygenated blood, except the pulmonary artery. Except pulmonary artery. Now that one is called a special blood vessel. We shall look at another one. Why is it special? Because if most of them do carry oxygenated blood. For it, it carries another type of blood. So it becomes a special blood vessel. I will teach you that later in other lessons that are going to come in. Um, oxygenated blood means blood with oxygen. Arteries carry blood with oxygen. And blood with oxygen is what we call oxygenated blood. Yeah, characteristic number uh, next about arteries. We said arteries, we can describe them, we can talk about them using all these characteristics. And another one is that they do not have valves. Arteries do not have valves. Arteries, arteries do not have. This is another characteristic that arteries do not have valves. The word is valves. Arteries do not have valves. Yeah, we are going to look at valves in other blood vessels here. There is one of them that has valves, and since arteries do not have, we talk. Excuse me, we talk about it as a characteristic that arteries do not have valves. We are going to look at what valves are. Actually, uh, those ones we shall find them in another blood vessel, and I will give you the details of the valves. Um, arteries. Another characteristic, arteries have a narrow lumen. Arteries have a narrow lumen. Arteries, arteries have 
a narrow lumen. Arteries have a narrow lumen. Arteries have a narrow lumen. Children, the word is lumen. That is a scientific word to mean blood passage. A scientific word to mean blood passage. So if you can't use the word lumen, you say arteries have a narrow blood passage. Very narrow. It has, and we shall also look at the reason why it has a narrow blood passage. So we say arteries have a narrow lumen or blood passage. So I've told you the scientific word to mean lumen is blood passage through which blood, that hole, because we already said that blood vessels are tubes, and if it is a tube, there is a hole that is allowing blood to go through it, but the hole through the vein, the arteries are, are very narrow, very narrow, and the opposite of narrow is white children, I believe you have learned that in, uh, in your English, so arteries have a narrow lumen. Children, I'm going to go back through these characteristics and then thereafter I will show you the structure, I will show you the diagram of an artery. Uh, characteristic number we say they have a thick and uh, strong walls to withstand the pressure at which blood is pumped through them. Most arteries carry oxidated blood except the pulmonary artery. Arteries do not have valves and then arteries have a narrow lumen or they have a narrow blood passage. We are going to look at the structure or the diagram. The diagram, diagram, diagram of an. Okay, now um, our dear learners, are we uh, summarizing the characteristics so that we can be able to look at the diagram? Uh, because the diagram is going to reflect these characteristics. Uh, like uh, most arteries, that one may not be reflected. You need to know it that most arteries carry uh, oxygenated blood except a pulmonary artery. And then arteries do not have valves. Arteries have a narrow lumen or blood passage. And next is diagram of an artery. And children, the diagram of an artery is here. This is the diagram of an artery. A very simple diagram as it looks. Very easy for you to draw. And uh, and also very easy to name because it consists of very few parts. Among the parts, we have the narrow lumen. And I've already told you children that this is the scientific word to mean blood passage. So this is what we call a narrow lumen. This is where blood passes through the arteries. And I also told you that as blood passes through these arteries, it passes through with a very high pressure. And that's why arteries are made up of thick walls. So if you're told you to draw the structure or the diagram of an artery, it is very simple for you to draw. You put the, 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 the lumen here. This is the passage of blood, then plus the thick walls. And this is simply uh, how an artery looks like. This is the structure of an artery. And um, uh, about an artery as a blood vessel, we are done. We have looked at what it is. We have looked at um, the characteristics. We have looked at its structure here. And then I'm going to give you a small activity to ask about arteries so that in the next lesson, we can look at another blood vessel or at other blood vessels. So next here, pupils, uh, we are going to look. I'm giving you very few questions for you to answer. I want to see, I want to know if you've really followed about these blood vessels or about the whole topic where we started and that is the circulatory system. So next uh, on our work is activity. Activity. You're going to try out this work in your books and then I'll be able to get this work and mark. And I see those people who follow the teachers while we are teaching. And in our activity, uh, we have our number one, which says, what do you understand by the circulatory system? Remember that was our main topic, which brought us into the blood vessels. So I believe you'll be able to give me the answer and then I'll see those who are being following. Well, what do you understand? What do you understand? What do you understand by the what do you understand by the term? By the term circulatory circulatory 
what do you understand by the term circulatory system? Ah, I believe you'll be able to get this for me from your notes, from your head, I don't mind, but I just want a correct answer. What do you understand by the circulatory system? I have question number two for my pupils, for my good children. And question number two says, write down two body organs. Write down, write down, write down two body, write down two body organs, two body organs that, write down two body organs that make up the circulatory system. Write down two body organs that make up. Write down two body organs that make up the circulatory system. Circulatory. The circulatory system. That is our question in number two children. Very simple. For those who have been following and for those who have even copied the work, write down two body organs that make up the circulatory system. I have a question in number three for you. Question number three children says, what, what are blood vessels? What are blood vessels? Wow, very simple questions. What are blood vessels? That is going to be our question number three. And question number four is asking you to write down the three main types of blood vessels. Question number four says, write down. Write down. Write down the three. Uh, write down the three main types. The three main types of blood vessels. Very simple question. You're going to get a hundred percent for all of them. Write down the three main types of blood vessels. And I have question number five for you children. I have question number five. And that question number five says, um, why are arteries? Why are arteries? Well, simple questions. Why are arteries? Why are arteries? Question number five children is saying, why are arteries made up? Why are arteries made up of um, thick walls? Why are arteries made up of thick walls? Why are arteries made up of thick walls? Wow, wow. I can see people enjoying the questions. Very nice ones. Why are arteries made up of thick walls? That is a wonderful question. Everyone is already enjoying. You're going to answer it correctly. I have question number six for you. Question number six for you. Question number six for the you pupils, my dear children, good ones. Question number six says draw. It says draw. Draw and name. Draw and name. The structure. Draw and name the structure, the structure or the diagram, the structure or the diagram of an artery. Uh, those are our questions, children. Only six simple ones. Make sure you get a hundred out of a hundred. What do you understand by the term circulatory system? Write down two body organs that make up the circulatory system. Question number three, what are blood vessels? What are blood vessels? And then question number four says, write down the three main types of blood vessels. Question number five says, why are arteries made up of thick walls? Why are arteries made up of thick walls? Question number six and the last one, children says, draw and name the structure of an artery. So that is our activity and it marks the end of our lesson today. And when I come back to the next lesson, I'm going to be teaching you about another blood vessel. Thank you for being good pupils and listening attentively. 
See you next time.